I've been running this team here on my wife's account. And I think my wife's account is probably a better representation of a better, better, greater majority of the people who are watching this or participating in the Odin event. And um, the reason I say that is because my wife doesn't have a lot of the same champions that some of the more meta teams for this dungeon. Well, I guess that's not entirely true. Like, I mean, she did the fusion for Newt. She did the fusion for Armand's. But the gear is still lacking. Like, the point that I'm trying to say is it's not on my main account or any of my alts. So, um, with the gear not up to par or up not up to what I'm used to and with the champions not where I'm used to, Arena Hall and whatnot, I, I thought that this was going to be a good team. I thought this would be a good uh, little showcase and I don't want to just do a showcase here. I'm actually going to run a few stages, a few runs of uh, stage 15 here. Stage 15 is the most, I don't want to say reliable. I mean, it's reliable, but it's like, because she can do like 18, 19, right? Can't do 20 yet on full auto, but I think 15 would be a decent one. Right, it's not too high because I know a lot of people can't even get to like I, I've seen people comment, "Oh, I'm stuck on stage 11 or stage 14." I figured, okay, well, let's do 15 um, since can't even get to 20 on this account. I forgot where I was going with this entirely. Let me get a little coffee. I just woke up. But how are you guys doing this weekend? It's Saturday. It's uh, scalding hot. Um, yeah, so I'm reading your guys' comments. A lot of you are saying, you know, you're not even going to bother with the dungeon. Some of you guys are saying that the pinpoint set isn't even really worth it. I don't really have my own opinion yet since I haven't really used it. Because it's easy to just, you know, take other people's opinions and use them as your own. Or, you know, you could watch as many videos as you want to. And those are usually good representations for the most part. But at the same time, I'm more of the mind that says, hey, I think it's important that I try something out myself and then, you know, um, form my own opinion. For an example, uh, uh, on my other channel, I, I play other games, right? Because my passion is video games. I don't want to just do raid and... I don't put all my eggs into one basket as somebody who wants to go YouTube full time. So I, I, you know, I talk about it all the time because I'm always promoting it. But uh, I, was, I was playing this game last night called Dungeon Born. And the reviews were mixed, right? It's like this action type thing you go around. But the, the point that I'm trying to get to is the reviews were mixed. And even though they were mixed and I was ambivalent and I'm usually ambivalent, um, I decided to try it out. For myself and lo and behold yeah i tried it out for myself and it was actually actually pretty shit uh, a good example another example is probably borderlands if, if any of you guys have played borderlands it was the uh the pre-sequel like the fourth installment of um of the series if anybody really likes that like i played all of them even the telltale games for um borderlands like i like the series a lot of people didn't like pre-sequel. A lot of people didn't like Borderlands 3. Uh, a lot of people were complaining about it or like, you know. But I tried it out for myself and I really enjoyed it. So I think all this to let you guys know, one, to promote my other channel and two, um, to, to always remember that you need to try things out for yourself. All right? Don't just take people's word. Don't even take my word for it. Guys, half the time my words are wrong. You know what I mean? Or half the time, the words are not even really mine. You know, especially when it comes to comps or champion builds, for most of these things that I show you guys, they're not really my ideas. You know, they're shared ideas. That's kind of the point of, I guess, doing videos and spreading the knowledge. In fact, I, I would argue that's kind of just the whole point of being human, right? We We learn from each other. Forgot where I was going with that, too. This is going to be sort of just a random ranting style thing, I guess. But um, let's talk about the team. I'm not really here to show you guys the team, but... Oh, shit. Did my computer just... Uh, what's going on? 
the screen's just turned on. Oh, you know what it is? My power mode is, uh, gotta change this real quick. I have it set to power saver mode because I'm playing on my other channel. I'm playing Black Wukong. And for some reason, you can't start the game in, in uh, ultimate performance mode, which is how I usually have it. But I changed it to power mode, and so now my screen keeps turning off every now and then. But besides that, I want to talk about this. This is not really like a guide. This is more of me wanting to see what the drop rates are possibly are i probably should have started the video off with that it's what are we we're, we're five five almost six minutes in and i'm just rambling about random things but um yeah i want to do a bunch of runs here on stage 15 on stage 15 you can get four to six star gear and i haven't really seen anything amazing so far I think at stage 20 and above, you can only get five to six star gear. And maybe this would give somebody uh, an indication of whether or not it's even worth it climbing up. Because I know a lot of people are struggling with this. Some people are saying, oh, I stopped at 27. Some people are just farming 24 and are okay with that. I am trying, well, because I'm a content creator, I worked to do stage 30. Now I have a team that can farm stage 30 pretty consistently, but uh, Tickle Does Raid hit me up and he was like, hey, there's a, an event coming up specifically dealing with this dungeon. So I would hold off on using your energy and, and don't, don't worry about it too much because we have nine weeks of this dungeon being open. And that's the other thing, right? I see a lot of actually pretty juicy rewards for like fire knight or what do you call it uh, spider blanked out for a minute and like i was seeing prism crystals um primal crystals some good stuff and i saw a mythical ore i was like oh that looks pretty pretty good and i think initially when i was excited i was like i'm gonna save all my energy and i'm only gonna dump these nine weeks since it's a limited time event all my energy into this dungeon here but i was talking to darren um comments all the time in my videos shout out to darren and he was like get the shiny out of your eyes you know and, and that's a good point oftentimes and again polarium is really good about this oftentimes polarium wants to um put something shiny in front of your face so you're just like oh and i think it's important to not get too into it because then you start to neglect other areas of the game or what's important or you start to stress out or you feel the fomo or you feel like you're missing out this dungeon feels like it's made for whales it doesn't feel like it was made for for most of the community right like stage 30 arguably has the best rewards. I don't know for sure because I don't know the the, the science or, or not the science, the freaking statistics behind it. But for reference, I've done I've dropped about 4000 energy on stage 30 on my main account so far. Right. And I only have eight pieces of pinpoint gear that I haven't rolled up yet, so I don't even know if it's usable. I mean, I'm going to keep it regardless, even if it rolls trash and it's just a bunch of one one ones. But it's just like. Um, 4,000 energy and 8 pieces of gear. That's 4 artifacts, by the way. 4 artifacts and 4 accessories of pinpoint gear. It's a decent set, I think. Especially because it's a good filler set. And you can get... Like, I was watching Tai Raids. Or Tairaku. And he was even mentioning, like, hey, the accessories... Like, the ring and the amulet gives you speed and you know i think accuracy or something so it's it's a good filler piece for the bottom row so you're definitely going to want to farm a little bit into it and you know, i thought that was a good point like someone somebody uh commented oh um you could get speed from protection artifacts accessories and uh supersonic and i'm like that's a good point but you also can't farm really you can't farm them like you can get the uh, supersonic gear from Centranos 
and protection gear from Hydra, but you can't really sit there and farm a dungeon like that. If you're wondering why I'm pausing a lot, it's because I'm trying to do better at thinking before I talk because I was I was editing my videos and I say uh a lot. I say uh 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 and I, I just want to be better at that. But um fuck, I just did it. God damn it. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of blues. I'm basically just farming silver on stage 15. But again, I'm not too stressed about it. It's my wife's account. She doesn't even really play. I'm just kind of here with it. But Oh, I forgot to mention on my main account where I dropped 4,000 energy and got eight pieces of gear. What I deem to be usable is anything that's epic, six stars and above, right? So the minimum requirement for me to even consider something to be worth keeping is six stars and then epic rarity or above. I did see, I think, one or two mythical accessories. I'm pretty sure I did. I was just on my phone. I'm pretty sure I saw a mythical accessory. I don't know if you get mythical accessories from only stage 30 or like stage 27 and up. I wish Polarium would like let us know what's up with that, but yeah. Anyway, here's the team, right? This is what she could do, the best that she could do. She has Theodore. She got lucky and pulled Theodore. And he places the buffs that increase speed and the poisons, and he activates the poisons and... Uh, HP burns. He also places poison sensitivity. I was actually using before Armands, before I remembered, hey, my wife has Armands. I was putting in Artak. So Artak would place the HP burns, and he's a pretty tanky character. They're both in regen sets, activates the HP burns all around. It's a pretty nice setup. And then I realized I should, as I was moving up, I was thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I should just throw in Armands. And maybe that would help out. But Theodore is there for some extra damage. This is one way to get damage. You could poison, you can HP burn, and then you have Newt here doing his Blessed Bash, decreasing damage also. These are not the best builds, but it functions, right? Sun Wukong is going to place the... Well, I have Sun Wukong in here because on both of my alts that I've been farming Odin on, I put Sun Wukong, Sun Wukong, actually, is how you pronounce it proper. Sun Wukong, because he's built very weakly and because he's immortal, he comes back. The ads like to target him, and Odin actually targets Sun Wukong as well. I don't have to worry about a lot of the other champions dying. The other thing I like about Sun Wukong is if you set his presets, he can also sheep, so there's some control there. He also does the buff steal and the block buffs so that's him he also has a stun on the a1 but we have armands for those same things right the cc keeping the turn meter back of the ads because the ads will really mess you up and you want to make sure that you're doing your best to keep the ads at bay uko mighty uko i don't know why i didn't think about this before but mighty uko actually does pretty well in this dungeon they are constantly putting up a bunch of buffs. Uko has a passive that gives you a decent chance of stealing buffs. So Odin, oftentimes, every nine turns, he places a block damage buff, and that's insane. Well, Uko has a chance, pretty good chance, to often steal that. And when he steals it, it's protected. The same thing for when champions place a counterattack. Uko also places the block buffs as well as the buff strip as yeah as as well as the buff strip. And then Newt is here for the obvious reasons, right? He's basically just for damage. I'm going to show you guys the presets. I'll show you guys the builds. And what do you think? Do you think like 40 45 runs on super raids is good enough to give you a decent idea of of how much shit, basically, we're getting from, from the pinpoint, or from this dungeon? Uh, granted, it is only stage 15, but you can kind of get a sense, right? Or is 45 not enough? I don't know what it is, because I went to go shower. 
And I had set there he goes, it's the protector. He stole with his passive, he stole the block damage and okay, we got one epic there. Block damage and the speed up, and it was protected. I don't know what it is, but so I went to go shower, I went to get some coffee. I came back and only one battle had been done. For some reason, it was unchecked. The multi-battles, like it was unchecked to continue the top, the top box. That says continue ma even after champions re reach max level was unchecked. And I'm like, well, I never unchecked it. That's weird. But yeah. This team is probably going to be the best team that I can I can work with. Oh, I actually used Yostrid. I was using Yostrid, Yostrid, and because she's going really fast in this team, that was actually how I got the 20, 29 seconds. I took out Armands and I put in Yostrid, and she just makes her team go really fast. We got a Ancient Shard. Okay, so here, look, look at what we got, guys. 45 battles, and this is what we got. A lot of blue. I'm selling most of this, by the way. I'm selling all the blues, because on my wife's account, I just don't keep blues. I am not keeping four stars and below. But we do have some pieces of gear that look promising. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm actually surprised we got one Ancient Shard here. And the reason why I say they look promising is because, look, we have a five-star pinpoint right here. Decent. Pretty good stats. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say it's decent. And let's be real here. You're going to want to keep accessories, right? Accuracy, 10% speed. Banner as well. These are five stars for my wife's account. Level 71, pretty good. We have, uh, you know, this is, I'm going to sell that. But these are, this is only 45 run. 40, sorry. I was watching a supercell. You guys ever do that? You ever watch an, a show and then you automatically just adopt the accent in the show that you're watching? I'm an American, but sometimes I watch these shows and, and, a, and an accent just comes out that doesn't belong to me. 1,260 energy used, 45 runs. Um, but yeah, what what do you guys think? Let me... Go ahead and just take a quick screenshot of this so we can. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do this. This will be the thumbnail here. All right, thank you for bearing me, bearing with me on that. Let's go ahead and dive into this team. These are the presets, if anybody's wondering. Uko, broken set, so I'm not going to dive too far into it. Broken set on Uko, you're just looking for speed and accuracy. Open with the A2 to place the block bu uh, block buffs and to strip it. Armands, obvious presets, stun, turn meter steal, sheep, and debuff remo or buff removal, because he has that also. 252 speed, accuracy. I think he is in a speed or perception set. You know, your standard speed accessory needs gear. Sun Wukong, 136. Basically built out for damage. So he's got attack boots. He's in a savage set. Newt is in a broken set. But he has, you know, your standard damage build. Going decently fast. 236. Crit damage. Crit rate. Defense. Theodore opening with the... Oh, and um, I actually turned off the Fury of the King because... His counterattacks make it make the runs longer, so I turn that off. Tudor opening with the A2. If you don't set a preset, he opens with his A2. We're opening with A, opening with the, he opens with the A3. If you don't set a preset, so make sure you're setting these uh, setting this as an A. A2 priority one is what I'm trying to say. You want to place the poisons, poison sensitivity, and then bring up everybody's speed, and then. After you place the poisons, this is when you want to activate with chemistry on the A2. 244 speed, accuracy, survivability stats. You guys already know what it is. Let's go ahead and sell some stuff. And we're going to look at some of the pieces of gear that we want to look at for pinpoint.
All right, so we're selling all of these. This, I'm not going to bother re-rolling. Even if it rolls a quad, it's just not something that I'd be interested in re-rolling. And this is not really interesting to me, and neither is this. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop down to pinpoint. And, oh, that's right, accessories. I was about to freak out. I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I saw more, bro. I saw more. So these, whoa. And any of you guys saying, oh, you shouldn't sell rares and belows and, and whatnot. I've been doing this for a while and it's worked out pretty well. So it's not entirely stupid if it's been working and I do this for all my accounts because I don't waste the silver or the time thinking about blues and below. I'm doing just fine. All right, so we have pinpoints and we got three mil silver. Let's go ahead and run this, see where it lands. So we got triples, we one, 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 no, no triples. Sorry, what am I saying? Triple ones is what I'm trying to say. Crit damage on the amulet. I like it. We got res HP. Obviously, I'm going to keep it. HP. Damn. Double flats. Okay. I mean, we still get these things so you know like i said we're gonna keep that the rolls are pretty bad haven't seen anything good yet yeah no five star give me speed give me triple speed triple flat fucking defense god damn bro this one's this one's decent i mean we got the res with the hp and the attack nothing wrong with that and let's see this shield. There you go. Accuracy and HP. 